Hello friends, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create blank of a stamping part using Hyperform's Ready Awesome Step. For that, you need to use the user profile as Hyperworks on the Hyperform's Ready Awesome Step. Now we are in the Ready Awesome Step GUI. Let's just import our geometry. You can leave this option to auto detect so that you can uh, access any type file types that are available in this software. Or uh, specifically, you can uh, select your file type. Delete any previous history uh, models. And now you can browse your part. You can uh, switch to wireframe mode from this option or surface mode from this option. Now, actually, I can uh, I have I have this part as uh, I have two parts one this part and mirror image of it. Uh, but uh, I can use this uh, symmetry option, but I don't want to use that right now. Uh, I will show you a uh, little cat related commands in the hyperform. You can means I will I'm going to reflect this part over this side. You can do that in the dedicated cat software. But still, if you want to use uh, some surface command from uh, cat related commands in hyperform, uh, there we go for that. So go into geometry and then reflect. Select the surfaces as the data is in the surface form. Here you can switch to surface if there if you were in the elements or component or lines etc. Uh, uh, filters you can switch to surfaces. Now select drag the window and select the surfaces. Uh, the symmetry is in the arrow is on the visor plane. Uh, so I will select the normal to it that is x line x axis. Uh, select any base point where anywhere in the visor plane. And now I want both the parts so I will say uh, duplicate into original component and will reflect the part so there we go we, this is my part um, but actually i don't want these holes to appear in my blank so i will delete them so for that uh, right now the model is imported in the model browser so i will import that into my one step browser by clicking on part right clicking on parts and then new and select your imported recently imported part now in the part name i'm clicking on the part name right clicking on the part name the, by going to geometry you can see the remove holes command um, for that, you should select all the surfaces or the specific surfaces on which the holes are uh, there. After that, uh, directly go to diameter. Uh, you can see that these whole diameters must be, I think, less than 25 mm. So I will enter 25 mm. So, right, so that this will find the holes, any holes having diameter less than 25 mm. So I'll say find. It is appropriately, I think, found uh, holes, but still these holes are not captured. Actually, these are not holes. Proper holes. These are, you can say, pockets. You can remove them later on by some other commands. So right now we can delete these holes. So say delete. Now for these uh, pockets, I will create um, temporary. Uh, I will create new surfaces, new surface patches over there. So go to geometry, create surfaces, then spline filter, and then just click on the edges. Okay, fine. So my geometry seems to be uh, without any pocket, but still there are some red lines which indicate that. Uh, which indicate that we need some cleaning, geometry cleanup over here. Uh, this red line indicates that these two parts are still distinct, as well as if there were any yellow edges, they indicate that uh, any duplicate surfaces are there that need to be modified. So, for that, I will again right click on my part name and, and then go into geometry and then clean up. This clean up option for that, uh, you need to select your uh, surfaces or just say all the surfaces. Now, you can use this auto clean up button to clean up all the geometry errors automatically. Uh, if they, if the auto, auto, auto clean up doesn't resolve your problem, you can modify the surface irregularities or imperfections uh, manually. I will show you that uh, in the later uh, videos. Okay, right now our geometry is perfectly clean. We can directly go to our meshing. So use this R mesh panel. So for this model, uh, I will use minimum edge length as 1 mm. Maximum edge length as 5 mm. Quadrant deviation I will leave, I will leave to 0.1. And fillet angle I will use 2 degrees. Uh, consider these parameters properly by considering your geometry parameters. Like if you having fillet angle in your geometry about 5 degrees, then you cannot select fillet angle as 2. You need to select the fillet angle in such a way that there should be a proper capturing of this fillet. Means there should be at least 4 to 5 elements uh, capturing this fillet. So properly select those elements. Uh, those properly choose the these parameters as per your geometry. On the surfaces, I will select all the surfaces and say proceed. Now we have the mesh model. You can view this uh, mesh like this. Okay, fine. Now here I can change the material. Just right click and then into database. Database, you can see various materials, or you can create a new material and assign that material. Right now, I will use this CRD still and 
now I need to change the my part thickness okay fine uh, one thing I should clear that for radios uh, I use, means we use radios on step only for blank creation um, the percent, it does give percentage thinning or tilde curve results but uh, we don't rely upon that for that purpose we need radio we prefer to use incremental radios or radio, uh, incremental LS Dyna uh, radios is faster than the other solvers but uh, their results are not that accurate uh, hence uh, it is preferable to use the radios one step for uh, blank generation only so uh, okay this auto dip option uh, I will leave because I will skip that option because uh, I have this geometry perfectly aligned means this surface is perfectly oriented as per my stamping direction if it was not oriented properly I could use this option auto, auto dip so for that you need to click on this auto dip uh, radio button then select your component uh, the imported component and then calculate and say calculate auto tape it will calculate the angle uh, it will just calculate the angle that uh, which you can see over here and that angle is the angle by which your part must be rotated in order to have a proper uh, orientation as per the stamping direction and after getting that uh, those angles you can say auto tape you know, it will automatically rotate your part as uh, by that angle so that your part will be properly oriented to your stamping direction but right now as you can see my part is perfectly aligned or oriented as per my stamping direction which is Z and that's why I'm skipping this step also the undercut check I'm also skipping this step because as I said uh, if uh, radius one step is uh, I'm using for only blank creation and it does give uh, pretty good results even if even if there are any uh, machine errors or geometry errors I uh, mean uh, if, even if the machine quality is not good as, as you can see this machine quality is not mm, very fine uh, but still it does give very good results so if, if there are any uh, errors with the machine you can skip that it, it really doesn't matter uh, still I'm showing you the undercut checking for that click on the uh, select your component and then check undercut giving some errors okay right, giving some errors okay so now you can see uh, save field means uh, it has uh, saved some the error uh, the complicated elements or faulty elements in its in the clipboard so it uh, it saved 13 elements but it's really uh, I won't go for uh, rematching them because the results uh, will be quite perfect even if there are the undercut, res uh, undercut um, errors so I will directly go to check model and then finally I will go to run so before I uh, before the run process starts I need to save the model so I will save the model ok fine now the run process will start Now to view the results, you can see these panels were these uh, these options were uh, uh, hi hided because uh, we weren't uh, we haven't any uh, uh, run. Okay, now we can see the results. You can see uh, these options were uh, not visible means not operable. Uh, okay, now we can see the results. You can see uh, these options where we cannot uh, we could not operate or uh, use these options because we haven't run the model. But now as we have run the model, we can. Uh, use these options so if, uh, instead of using the uh, right, using these options I will miss uh, by right clicking instead of accessing okay fine we can, now we can use the uh, okay fine now we can uh, see these options which were uh, not uh, operable okay fine now we can see the results for that okay you can see these options were uh, inoperable before we run the model so uh, now they are you can, you can use these options but still uh, I won't use my uh, these options by right clicking instead I use prefer to use utility browser uh, in the utility browsers in the results panel you can use this generate report option where you can have these results uh, okay you can have these results in HTML uh, mode or you can invoke the hyperview post processor of the hyperworks so uh, First of all, uh, let's open the results. Let's just open the results in the hyperview. Uh, check all the results that you want, and then say generate. I will really invoke the new software window that is hyperview. Ignore these errors. Now this error blank. Okay, these are uh, these are the playback options. So I will say I will click on play button. 
will slow down the animation plot okay we can pro- to actually uh, um we can view the results by clicking on contour and then uh, result type as if you want to say uh, you want to view the results say percentage thickness averaging method to simple and say apply but uh, as i told you that these results are not as good as the incremental radius will give because uh, you see you, you, you have seen that it haven't asked us about the uh, binder load or uh, tool loading anything about that we haven't uh, it doesn't it didn't ask us about any friction coefficient about the uh, for the die punch etc uh, that's why uh, these results are not as good as accurate as the like, incremental radius or ls dynamic give so we are we have limited means i we limit this uh, radius one step use only for blank creation so i'm just going to close this window and now just let's just uh, generate the report in html format and i will use the export option as jpg means there will be images but i could use avi means video options too but right now i'm using the now uh, this will invoke your uh, default browser and show you the results okay this is the these are the results and also you can use a blank shape option to do the blank meshing also let's just uh, hide our original part okay this is our blank mesh you can smooth in the mesh okay you can export this file to igs format now okay it has been exported uh, you can view that exported file also let's just import that one Must be named something like blank. Means your uh, file name underscore blank, and it's in the IGS format. Okay, this is your blank. Let's just hide our original part. Okay, this is our blank. So these are quite. Uh, you can delete these later on. Maybe a software error or something or uh, means uh, meshing errors. But you can ignore that. You just need these the trim line of your blank in the for further processing. So that's fine. Uh, Also, you can. I'm going to delete this. Also, you can uh, use the nesting options in the blank shape. You can go to nesting, select the spread elements, and go for nesting. Fine, there was something uh, wrong with it. Uh, actually, go to blank shape. Okay, I turned off that. Okay, now you need to uh, turn on the element visualization. Then go to nesting, select the displayed elements. These are the blank elements. Go to nesting. Now um, this new window in all switch represents the nest by which uh, through which you can control the nesting parameters. Um, you can enter the margins over here. I want part to part margin as 1.5 mm. Part to the x edge or say length edge length as 1.5 mm. And part to width as 1.5. and uh, switch to coil type means it will uh, show you strip like structure and then just click on this auto nest rotate means it will automatically rotate your part and nest it it's giving the percentage utilization as 97.1 and it's your utilization you can uh, you can create different uh, different uh, models of your nest uh, different like, setups of your nesting uh, like this Uh, you can export this in to IGS format again. Yes. Okay. Okay. You can uh, do that in stream results also. Let's just import that file too. Uh, that's all. Uh, thanks for watching my video.